Episode 496, Kane. Welcome, mate. Thanks for driving driving up. Thanks for having good me. To, good to have you on here, mate. I've been watching a lot of your stuff. You do a lot of impressive stuff. And this morning I saw David Goggins is going for a record of yours. And that's probably something we'll dive into a little bit later. But one of the things that every time I go on your page, I'm like, this dude's in just insane is your skydiving. Mm, I've yeah. never had a skydiver on the podcast, mate. What sort of inspires you to want to jump out of a perfectly good plane? <laughs> um, oh, it's like more of an intense story to start with, really. Yep. Um, yeah, I was just, that was the, like, to be honest, I was that was the scariest thing for me to do, I think. Like, I was one of those guys, um, if you're on a balcony, you're like standing on the edge of the balcony, you get that weird feeling of like oh, lights yeah. kind of thing. Like, I was like that. And um, it sort of got to a stage and I was like... I don't know, I just didn't really want to be afraid of anything. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to like do, if I can do this skydive thing, then it's sweet. Like I've been in the ocean and had like a shark next to me and stuff like that. And I was pretty good then. And, um, the, but the skydive thing, I always said to people, I was like, I'll never skydive. I'm not going to let someone pack my chute and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what it was. I thought you like pressed a button, and, like the parachute come out. Yeah. Like, I had no idea about skydiving. And then, um, yeah, I just booked it in. And then I remember the first, you do like a day of theory and then, um, that afternoon you do a jump and I remember going up in the plane and I thought for sure like 50-50 I'm going to die. Like I thought yeah, well, there's it was a good like chance 50, that, right? but not 50-50 but I was so in my head and I was like if I get out of this like I'm never doing this again, like I'm never doing it again and then I jumped and um, like it was good and then I didn't do like the next jump for like a week or so because yep. it was like a couple of hours away so I was just driving there and then um, after about three or so jumps I was like yeah, like I'm surviving this. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. And then, um, yeah, I sort of just got super addicted to it. Yeah. How many jumps have you done now? Oh, I don't like, you're meant to keep track of them and write them all down, but like three, 300, 350 or something. Fuck. But, uh, but in the skydive world, that's honestly not much. Yeah. yeah right. Like all those sort of guys have done thousands. Um, <laughs> but the footage looks insane. Like you got to check out Kane's Instagram and just the, the videos are so therapeutic. I've done three jumps, but always in tandem. Yeah. I was showing my buddy yesterday. I'm like, my last jump, I was like, I'm, I'm satisfied now. I don't think I want to jump out of any more planes. And then I watched your videos. I'm like, that'd be pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. So for you, it was about overcoming fear. Yeah, that, like a, a thousand percent. Yeah. All I wanted to do was just do it. Like, yeah. And I thought I just wanted to get like my license and um, like so just sort of achieve that. And then I'll never do it again. <laughs> And then you just meet people and like just the people you meet is probably the best side of it. Yep. And then obviously it's nice having beers and stuff after and um, <laughs> you jump out of like Byron Bay. So yeah, like at a stage I was super addicted to it. Like, and that's what people get. Like they don't really care about anything else. All they care about is jumping. A and then they, feeling. Yeah. Then they, but the problem is there's like steps to it. You get into like base jumping and then you get the wing suiting. Are you going to do any of that or have I you done don't know. That is dangerous. Like it is. <laughs> yeah. And it's a small world. Like, you get to know a lot of people that sort of die doing yep. it. Yeah. Um, like, because obviously every summer they all go to Europe. Yep. And like, yeah, a lot of people die doing it. Yeah. I, I think I read or heard somewhere like the average base jumper, once you start base jumping, your life expectancy is like three to five years or something. Yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah. It was like, I don't know what, it was like 12 guys um, sort of introduced base jumping and they all died. Like all of them, everyone that sort of like were the testers for it sort of thing. Um, not base jumping, wingsuiting. I mean, yeah, wingsuiting, they all died, yeah. But um, but you can see why the guys love it. Like yeah. they, they'll go, and it sounds cool. Like I'd just like to do it without doing the wingsuiting. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they get a van and they'll like live in the van on the side of like, you know, a Swiss mountain. And yep. um, then they'll get up in the early in the morning, do like the four-hour hike, and then they get to the top and then, you know, pack – put their wingsuit on, pack, you know, the clothes into the suit and then jump off and then land next to the car and have a beer. Like, it sounds awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it does when you sound like that, yeah. but I reckon I'd freak out at the top. But obviously chasing down that fear, that's been something that you've done a lot of in your whole life. Like, you're an insane endurance athlete. Like, your track record from Iron or Surf Life Saving Ironman to them. You competed in Kona too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's also yeah. insane. And then obviously breaking a number of Guinness World Records for pull-ups. Take us back to first how you got involved in the surf life saving, where the, can I say addiction to like endurance events came from and how, I guess, the skydiving approach of just diving into these these insane challenges has sort of shaped your life and then also now business. Yeah. Um, well, it all sort of just started. Obviously, my brother is a little bit older than me, so... and. It, 
back then you had the Uncle Toby's and the Nutrigrain. I remember growing up watching that. Yeah, yeah. like those guys were like, like that's a problem. Cause like I, I didn't give a shit about school. Like yeah. because all I wanted to do was be an uncle, like a Uncle Toby's athlete. They were on Baywatch. They were, you know, living on the beach. The Trevor Hendy doing yeah. all this stuff. And then, so my brother made that, I think when he was like 16. And um, like he was earning a stack of money in like year 11 or whatever yeah. it was. And then like that's all I wanted to do. And um, my dad coached us because he was a um, lifeguard on the Gold Coast for like 30 years. So yep. he coached us since we were like, oh, I think I started when I was like seven. And um, just every year he would go up with us and coach us all the way through kind of yeah. thing. Until kind of me and my brother got, well, my brother's like a little bit like bitchy. <laughs> when it comes to training, he'd hate me. When I got better, he was, yep. he was tough to train with. Yep. So we kind of split up a little bit, me and him, yeah, um, right. when I got a little bit better. And then, yeah, so I, I think I made the series when I was 16 as well, um, the Nutrigrain by that point. It was still pretty popular then. Like, it was a good series to make. And I was just, yeah, I just loved it. And then the uh, Cooling Out of Gold come back um, when I was 19. And it hadn't been on since, like, 1985 or 87 or something. And then that was a big – that's when my brother <laughs> – because I won that race and he yep. was, like, the favourite. So um, I read that. And yeah. Can you explain first what the Nutrigrain series was in terms of modalities and all that? And then also the – because i got the cool get, get a gold written down here and it is insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> insane. Well, it's, um, you train for it though. It's, it's actually, it's not too bad. But yeah, the <laughs> Nutrigrain um, is just like a summer series. Yep. So you do six sort of races over the summer yep. and um, then you have obviously like a champion at the end and then, you know, eight or so might qualify for the next year. Yep. And um, you just race all, all over Australia, yeah, for that. And that's just been on sort of year after year. Yep. But back in the day, there was the Uncle Toby's and the Nutrigrain. So there was two like rival series. Yep. And that's why there was sort of so much money in, in it because yep. they were sort of trying to keep each athletes Athlete. in different series, yeah. Gotcha. And they were like super competitive. Um, but yeah, and then the cooling out of gold, it's like iconic event. It's, you know, a four, four and a half hour race on the Gold Coast. So it was, they've changed the course, but when it was at its best, it started at Surface Paradise, went all the way to cooling Gatta, which is like 23k up the coast. And then you worked all your way back to Surface Paradise again. Just doing different. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's insane. Yep. And you've won it five times. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So I won it the first year. Yeah. When I was 19, um, 2005 I think it was um and then I sort of got into like triathlon do a few different things and would yep. always sort of I'd just get injured I'd always go back because that was just like a good fallback on to come yep. back and um and obviously like my dad did the race I think in 90 I think did a couple times but he did in 1987 I think cooling out of gold and he got seventh so um I love that history side of it. Like yep. I love it. There's a movie called The Cooling Out of Gold. I'd watch that and, you know, I know the lifeguards that were like the extras in there and yep. stuff like that. Like, yeah, I love it's that history a, side of the sport. Big connection to it. How did you train and prep for that? Like, because it's 46 Ks of ocean work. Yeah. For anyone, we did a, a, a event for Movember a number of years ago where we paddle boarded from Cooling Gatta to Green Mount as well. And it took us eight hours and... We ended up, I think the final year we did it and the lifeguards were like, you guys can't do it again because the surf was insane. And we had blokes who just were couch dudes. They yeah, didn't, yeah, They yeah. didn't train at all, but they're like, yeah, it's for charity, we'll do that. And they were just eating shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fucking getting rescued and whatnot. But that took us so long and I don't train specifically on paddle boards or anything like that, but that was one of the most grueling things I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. And you're now pretty much tr quadrupling that distance doing different modalities and racing it. Like, yeah. What was that prep like? Um, well, you pretty much just mimic the, like I was like completely different to everyone else as well. Like I didn't really train with a club. So everyone yeah. would train in clubs yep. and, they'd, you know, 20 of them might do a Saturday Ironman session or whatever. But I just like, and I'd always think I was so competitive. I'd think, you know, yep. I'm not going to show everyone what I've got kind of thing. Yep. And I'd just yep. do it by myself. Um, but I'd swim with the group in the morning, but it would just consist of, yeah, swimming like four times a week, paddling every afternoon and either doing gym or running during the day. And then every Saturday, I'd just sort of like mimic the course. So it like the real course is 46K or something. Yep. So it might be a third, like I might just change it to be 30K or whatever, but I'd always do the whole course probably twice before the race. Yep. And that was when my mum sort of took me and my dad took my brother because the first year, 
me and my brother couldn't really train together after yep. that. And um, we sort of, yeah, so he would go off doing his thing and then mum would take me. So I was like, little mama's boy, <laughs> get a mum to take me. And she'd basically just drop me off at like surface and then pick me up at, well, pick my ski up at Coolangatta and then I'd swim to like Balinga and then she'd meet me at Balinga, give me a water and then I'd run here. Then she'd meet me there and just follow me up the coast, yeah. So your whole life you've been doing these endurance sports pretty much yeah yeah well yeah I, I, I was 19 pretty young to do yeah. that yeah and then um yeah just kept on sort of doing it and obviously I love Hawaii I man like I thought that was like those guys were the pinnacle of endurance athletes so like I wanted to sometime get into that but that's a tough sport as well, like well yeah what's the comparison like between what you were doing with the Nutrigrain stuff and cool and get a goal to then doing Kona which is you know arguably one of the most challenging endurance events on the planet yeah yeah like i loved it i love watching it and i love those those guys but it is um like riding's just like it's so like continuous <laughs> it just takes so 180k's much 180k's yeah. or something isn't it but yeah yeah but like the, the training for it like it is you got to be like a different sort of person to train like that like yeah. they just spent so many hours on the bike and i love running but yeah the riding's tough and then you're like you got to do a lot of travel as well. I don't know. I just love home. I love staying on the Gold Coast. Like those guys are just all over, everywhere yep. traveling. Um, but then like obviously I was just like I just got bored up in the surf, like doing that. So I'd get into like the triathlon thing and I'd do it, and then I'd always just miss home. And Shannon was still racing then, and yep. like my friends that I'm like swimming with are still racing, and it was just so easy to say, "Oh no, next year I'm gonna." And when other people win stuff as well, you're like, oh, "I can beat them." Like I'll go <laughs> yeah, back, so you just want to go back and do it again. Yeah. So I'd always sort of go back, um, and sort of yeah, get back into it. But yeah, so but it, still in saying that, like the only difference is like I think what's so good about like Iron Man is um like power to weight, like. The athletes are very, very good. Like you can obviously like <coughs> swim really well, paddle really well. You could go into the gym and still, you know, do lift well. you know, lift weights and stuff well. And then um whereas like a triathlete, they're probably not gonna do like they can run and cycle and stuff, but they're probably not gonna get up and do, you know, twenty pull ups or thirty pull ups yep. or something. Like it's a different like yes, clubbies are like very good powder weight. And obviously having surf knowledge and stuff like that is a skill as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that probably ties into there's two things I want to ask, actually. First, so you were the first person to hit five cool and get a golds, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then is it Ali? Ali Day, Ali yeah. Day's now got seven. Yeah, Does that yeah. sort of reignite the hunger for you to do a couple more? And, and no, nah, not really. Or? Like, I like Ali. Yeah. Like, he's, he's a good... If, he, if I didn't like him, it would. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> but he's super nice and I get along with him well. And I know, like, now when I sort of... When I was younger, like, I just wanted to win. Like, I just... And I thought... You know, like I deserve to win. Like, if like, why well, no one else should win? I should win. It was like a selfish way of like going into things. But yep. then I sort of got older. I was like, if someone beats me, then that's fine. Like they deserve to beat me. Obviously, like I'm training my hardest. If they can beat me, then that's fine. So you know, I know how hard Ali trains. Um, but I think if we went against each other, like at our best, it would have been a very good race. Like yeah. it would have been really, really good. That's what I sort of. Um, would if I if anything like regret or something like that not even for anyone to watch like just for me to sort of like I just love that stuff like yep. it would be like the pinnacle of just like two guys going at it that were the best at that yep and it would be like a tough thing like I love that toughness of like the last bit and it's just like I don't know whoever's the toughest wins the where the race really starts yeah. the head head starts to happen what um, I read a quote in I can't even remember what article I was reading but it's like you've got a reputation as someone who likes to suffer when racing and training and you can push yourself through pain barriers like few others. Where did that come from? One, is that true? I, I'd say it probably Yeah, is. I think so. <laughs> like, and yeah, and I don't know, I'd say if it wasn't, but for sure, even doing the pull-up records and yep. stuff like that, I think, I don't know, I think, I, I think I've got like different qualities in me that yep. um, get me there. Like I'm super OCD about <laughs> stuff as well. Like yep. if I say I'm going to do something, I have to do it. Like if I'm saying, okay, tomorrow I'm doing 2,000 pull-ups and yep. I'll go to lunch and have like eight beers or whatever, like I'll do the <laughs> the, the other <laughs> yeah, yeah. 1,500 in the afternoon. Like yep. otherwise I'll just think like something's weird, like I just have to do it. So with training, it was really good because I was like so OCD and I'd write everything out and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think definitely – just racing the other that's why i don't think when i was at my best guys couldn't beat me when it comes to the end just because i don't know i just always had that toughness and even just doing the pull-up records like i've torn my bicep five hours into doing the 12 hour record and stuff and i knew i got through it and stuff like whereas i know that not many people can do that like they sort of they make excuses or they 
yeah. stop or, you know, they'll do it next time or something like that. Whereas I don't really, it's just, I don't know. It's like a me thing. I don't really care when anyone, else, like I'm not really impressing anyone. I just yep. like it. If it's a challenge in my head and I want to do it, then that's like, that's it for me kind of yep. thing. Like I don't need other, if you're just doing it to impress other people, I think that's, it's not enough to make you really push through. Yep. Like that's why like Instagram's so bad and stuff because everyone just wants a photo on Instagram. They just oh, want dude. to like um, put their video on Instagram and they don't really care about what it really is, like really winning the race or whatever. They just want everyone to think they're the best yep. kind of thing. Yep. And um, yeah, like that's not enough. Like I'd say to all my mates like that want to run or whatever, but they just want to run so they can post on Instagram. They did 15K today or something. I am saying, <laughs> like you run for like two months, but you can't post anything on Instagram. Like don't post it, just do it for you. Because if you do it for you, like you'll probably keep going. But if you're just doing it so everyone thinks you're doing this, then it's not enough to really get the motivation to do it. Yeah. It definitely impacts your performance as well. If you're doing it for social media, you're not running as hard because you're trying to get your camera out or yeah, yeah, there's so yeah. many other... I, I often think about the athletes of today, like for example... You look at some of the greatest, right? Like Federer and Nadal, then you got Ronaldo, Messi, and LeBron, and all these people across well, yourself and Ali, like across different sports, there's always like some great rivalries. And in today's world, social media sort of takes you away from your obligations as an athlete. It's like you're an athlete, but now you've got to do all these media things and all the, all the, you know, these paid posts on Instagram, which takes you away from developing your craft. And I yeah, wonder yeah, if. Yeah we'll see in the future athletes will never reach the heights of or the domination of, you know, the woods and all of that because of the distraction of social media. And mm. obviously it provides other opportunities, but from a pure athletic output, it yep. might impact that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just love old school stuff, really. Yep. Like I've always, I've always loved that side of thing. And even... Like the training, like I just, I love running back streets and everything. Like I love, I just love like, I don't know, I think, I think it was what I said, like, was it that thing like Asperger's or something? They said, like, you kind of got Asperger's, I get weird around too many people sometimes. Yep. Like, I like being, yeah, by myself. And I think that's why I got so, so into endurance stuff because <coughs> you just spend so much time by yourself. Like, you can, you know, you're running 30K every second day or you're yep. doing 2,000 pull-ups by myself. And, um, like, I, I just like that, yeah. Have I mean, you ever felt weird about that? Because I can relate a lot to that. I do a lot of endurance stuff and I just love being by myself and people always were like, let's do a group this and group that. I'm like, I can do that maybe once a month. Yeah. But the rest of the time, just let me do my yeah, own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like, yeah, but I hate it. Like, I'm, and I'm nice and I want to talk to people and stuff, yep. but, like, I don't know, it's just, like, taxing sort yep. of thing. Yep. And, um, yeah, it's like you're thinking about that too much. Whereas, like, even in sport, like, I just love, like, sport and health and stuff like that to me it's like my thing it's yeah. not really other people's thing kind yeah. of thing like i don't really doing it to i'd rather go and have a beer and i can have beer with like those six guys and yep. be the best but yeah when it comes to like sport it doesn't really mix yep. for me kind of thing yep. yeah like i like the intense side of it um whereas i like if i was training with another person that was intense like that would be cool yeah. But when it's like a full social thing, it's just it makes me weird. Yeah. I'm the, man, I'm the exact same. It's always thinking about like the intent of training and I don't want to sit there and gas bag because I only have, you know, X amount of hours to train or an hour to train. So I want to maximize that. And depending on what I'm training for at any given time, um, I don't want people who are going to be like, oh, check this on Instagram or fucking be in the hype people. I'm like, I don't want your hype. Like last yeah. year I... um. We were talking about Guinness World Record and you were talking about how strict they were. I uh, did the 30 marathons in 30 days and broke the record. But then when they asked for the submission again, I didn't val uh, calibrate the rower. Okay. So the whole thing yeah, didn't yeah, count, yeah, really. even though I logged everything. Mm. So I was like, that bummed. But I'm like, I still know I did it. Yeah, so that's, yeah, fine. that's what I mean. Even like that, like, it's nice when obviously people... It, it just validates it having like yep. a Guinness world record, like thing like that. But to me, just like when I finish the Guinness world record, like that, it's pretty much 90% of like the end of what I wanted out of it yep. kind of thing. Like I just wanted to me, if I did it and like my mum saw it and like, you know, my brother saw it and my friends saw it and then that's it. Like, I don't really care that other people need it yep. kind of thing. Like, or see it. Yeah. How do you go when you finish, like say for example, when you've achieved all the world records that you've achieved or won the cool and get a gold's, do you sort of sit there and think about how good you are or are you already thinking about the next challenge for yourself or a bit of both? No, I like the like the cooling out of goal, the best thing, what I always thought, like winning the race and stuff. Like it's just – and people sort of say like, like my life and job is easy really. Like I didn't have a job. Like 
you just you're doing whatever you want and i enjoyed training yep. like swimming sucked like it did <laughs> my swimming in the morning sucked that wasn't fun yeah. and i hate the cold but um everything else is good so like i wanted to do that yep. like i wouldn't like even if i wasn't really getting paid to do it i still would have done it like yep. so it was like that's why i like I just think like money was free kind of thing because like I was, you're getting paid to do something that you loved kind of thing. Yep. But um, yeah, so like, what was the question again? Oh, it was just, I can't even remember, but that's... Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, but it, like the cooling out of gold. Yeah. So like what I would sort of think was the best thing about it was like, pr- like an oh, oh, that's why I love like Conor McGregor and stuff like yep. that. Because like to deal with pressure is like the hardest thing for sure. Like when I, like I won the cooling out of gold when I was 19, and, like, I went pretty well in winning it kind of thing. You can see you didn't just fluke it. And then I was, like, when I got older, obviously, I got to be big and I look fitter and stuff like that. So when I was, like, 22, 23, 24, whatever, doing the cool and got a goal, everyone just expected me to win. Like, yeah. I think even, like, on the odds, I was, like, $1.07 or something to win. Like, I was super, like, I don't think you could bet on it. Like, yep. I was, I was like, super favourite, favourite kind yeah. of thing. But, like everyone else thinks they can win like heaps even my mates and stuff like they would get so competitive whereas i wasn't as like just like they were like crazy like a few of them like crazy competitive so like they wouldn't even talk to me like for the little bit leading into it because they'd try and like sort of hate each other and stuff but um like nothing helps like odds don't help you when you're on the line and all these guys are good like if i'm on an off day and i lose then, you know, like, you just, like, everyone just thinks you blew it. Like, you're not yep. that good. And, like, last time was a fluke or something like that. But when, like, you deal with – when you got that amount of pressure on you and you're on the line, I'd think about it. I'd be on the line. I'd just think, like, no, no one else can help me. Like, all I've got to do in the next four hours is beat everyone else. Like, and I'd say when I coach, like, I've got to learn a few things, like, over the years. But dealing with that pressure and then winning – like it wasn't even winning it was just like you dealt with the pressure and you went you you did that for four hours and beat everyone like that was the biggest thing and i think like a lot of like you know guys like you know conor mcgregor israel asanya and stuff like to deal with that amount of pressure and go out there in front of like everyone and that's that's like in front of the world and do what they're meant to do like that's the hardest thing just winning's not that hard how do you manage that because a lot of people will be listening to this and pressure comes in all areas of life but you you run a business now as well but even back when you were competing hard out or you know you're doing your uh, your pull-ups on the today show where there's millions of people watching how did you handle that pressure yeah well it's yeah that's the today show (laughs) i was just getting thrown in the deep end really (laughs) like you got to just do it like and you got to be like obviously fortunate that you got that opportunity and stuff and like obviously you're comp i think that's why you know mma fighters and stuff like they don't believe they're going to lose like that's the thing that there's no in their head that they're going to lose so they just go into it with like a full-on confidence no matter what they're winning but whereas i would sort of think like these guys can beat me like they fully can like they they might beat me like there's different aspects in the race that they're better than me and um but i'd have a plan and i'd sort of know like i don't know in the end i know like it would just be like work and that's why you know like I would just know I trained harder than them. Like, yep. I f- for sure did. Like, there's no way they trained harder than me. And even for the pull-up thing, like, there's no way. And, it like, I could say this. That's why I, like, help people with pull-up stuff because you're still not going to train harder than me. Yep. Like, because I'm, like, crazy about it. Like, I'm obsessed with it. You're still not going to do it. Like, you're not going to be able to run 30K and then do pull-ups. And the next day, do 2,000. The next day, run 30K. Because you might want to do it, but your body's not going to let you do it. Like, you'll injure yourself. You'll you know get shin splints or whatever like but i've been through all that in my past so so i'm able to do it and i know these other people aren't able to do it i don't think and you got to be like super i don't know you got to be the right weight like your body's just got to be like perfect to be able to do something like that if you're too heavy you're going to tear your bicep you're going to you know do all sorts of stuff so i just know like the training i do is better and harder than everyone else so when you get on the race you should be able to win but that's what's so hard about surf life saving because you're in waves and stuff so you don't you don't get what you deserve all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Whereas the cooling out of gold you did it was a long race. So, yeah, you get what you deserve. A few things you touched on which a lot of people don't pay attention to is the years of, you know, you were doing Ironman and stuff from a young age and all of that adds to what you're able to do now. A lot of people just go, oh, I'm going to be – I remember when I got finished rugby and I got into CrossFit, I was like, I'm going to make the games in a year. And yeah. It's like I fully discredited every other athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of my own ego and – Obviously, some skills are transferable, but you've got to put the time in. Some people have been weightlifting and doing various things for 
decades and that's what we don't look at in order for you to achieve what you've done like the amount of uh, pull, what's your record for 24 hours it's like 7,000 I did 7,620 yeah for 24 but my eight hour record was the best I think like to me it was is that 4,710 yeah. that that yeah. was the best record for eight hours I broke I that down that was 588 an hour 10 a minute for 10 a minute for eight, eight hours, hours yeah that's yeah. insane like anyone listening go try do 10 Chin ups now for five minutes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ten well, I can really do that. Like even, yeah, like even five. Like I did in a lot, a lot of training sessions. I do five hours, ten minutes for five hours, and that was all right. But the last three hours is a different thing. Like what, even the hour record wasn't that. So good. talk us through that. Like, what starts hurting most? What do you? What's going on in your head? Your hands for sure. Hands. Yeah. yeah, like the last hour, my hands were like horrible. Like yeah. I like physically, I was good, and like I could do the pull ups. Like I was, I was just like. Physically, I was sweet, but like the last hour, like my hands were really bad. Like the um, like it's, it's kind of gross, but it was a thousand percent what happened. Like I could feel the skin of my hand like separated from like the meat oh, of it. Yuck. So like when I was on the bar, I could feel like it slide like a centimeter That's off so the gross, side, man. and my skin would stay on the bar, but my meat was sliding across. Like <laughs> it just all separated from my hand. It was just like a big like like oil blister kind of thing and it just yeah it was that was the worst even all the 24 hour Why ones wasn't as bad as that oh no that's the thing like you just got to do it. and you can get through it you just got to like it's just like one one more like one more time at it like it hurts and hurts the like you do another 10 and then you sit down you're like fuck i can't do any more i can't do any more then you have 20 seconds and you go i'll do one more and then you just go and do one yeah. more one more one more but it's th- things like that that separate you from other people having a crack at it because I, I know full well so many people would be like I'm giving up my you know my hand's going to be ruined forever or uh, bringing up multiple excuses when I was rowing the marathons my knee felt like this big chunk of rub every movement it was just like yeah yeah and it was that was like that from day 20 I was like I'm fucked here but I'm just yeah, gonna yeah, see what yeah. happens until it fully yeah. breaks and then two days later after I finished it was fine again mm, it's yeah. funny how quickly your body can repair as well when you're looking after nutrition hydration all the recovery components of things as well. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, Dr. Hydrate video, one thing that I've never heard anyone say, and I, I was listening to this this morning while I was walking to the gym, was you say to your clients or people that you coach, I wish there's always these moments after you've competed in something or completed something. Mm. I wish I could do that again. Yeah, yeah. And you're yeah. encouraging people to think about that before they even mm. start. Yeah. I think that was one of the biggest things I learned. Um yeah, I don't know. Just because, especially having like, it was bad having Shannon like racing with me because I put so much, I would put, because so, I honestly like, I I liked winning and stuff, but I wanted him to win more than me because yep. he loved it so much. Like he was obsessed with surf, like Iron Man. Like, yep. and everyone, he was older and he was like the guy. And like, I was the cooling out of gold guy at that start, stage. But Nutrigrain, he was like, everyone thought he was like the best kind yep. of thing. So I knew, and I'd see all the pressure he had on him. And whereas I didn't really have pressure on me in the Nutrigrains, so like the year I won it, it was longer races and people sort of thought I was going to go well. So I'd see all the pressure on him. So I'd get in races and I'd just be looking where he was to like see, you know, and try and get him to win yep. kind of thing. So that like I put a lot of pressure on him and I like it. So it took the pressure off me. <laughs> but um, yeah, at all. But then when, you know, I really wanted to win races and like when he retired and stuff like that, I think a big thing, like, and like I said to those kids and it, makes you deal with losing as well like because if you just go into a race and you're like i'm gonna win this and then you don't and then you obviously you're upset and you're disappointed or whatever you wake up the next morning and you're like like i wish i could just do that again yep. but i'd sort of yeah i told these kids i was like wake up on the morning you know if you're racing on sunday afternoon wake up on sunday and think you've lost it like you've already done that race yep. you lost like you're not going to get another chance at it you lost you got second you got third you got whatever it is it was the monday morning that's monday morning you lost yeah and then think i oh, know i've got one more chance of doing it like i get another chance of doing it and i get to race and i'm just going to put everything in it nothing else matters and um like i'm so lucky that i get another chance to like redeem that loss or whatever and then sort of stand on the line, like I said, with the cooling out of gold, like I'd sit and I'd look at the sand on the line and I'd just think like, no one else helps me. Like I've got to do it all myself. Nothing else matters except these next four hours. If like, and if I don't do it in the next four hours, then I'm not good enough. Like that's it. Like you, you deserve to lose kind of thing. Yep. And yeah, that's what I'd say to those kids I coach, like stand on the line. Don't 
go around running around with your friends 10 minutes before it or whatever. Just sit down, think about what you got to do and then stand on the line and just think no one else helps you. In the next 15 minutes of this race, you just got to do your best, make no mistakes and um, you lose, you lose. If you win, you win. And then you can wake up Monday morning and you're not going to think, oh, I wish I had another chance at this because you're like, you've already got another chance. You're not going to get two chances. Yep. Like, yeah. And I think that helped a lot and it makes you just deal with losing as well. 100%. Do you use that in other areas of your life as well? Um, I don't have that many areas of my life. Yeah. Really. Look, for me this morning when I was walking to the gym, I was I was just looking at it as a day in the life of it in general because there's so many days that we just let the day, you know, most people aren't intentional with it. They're just like, oh, fucking wake up, go to work, come yeah. home, go to sleep, rinse and repeat. And it's like, now that I'm, I'm 32 now, I'm like, I always wish I could go back to when I was 25. And when I was 25, I thought I was old. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. And it's like, I wish I could go back to 21. And it's like, well, for when you said that this morning, I was like, I got to really appreciate where I'm at now because there'll be a time when I'm 40 and 50 and I wish I was 32 again. So looking at myself when I'm 40 or 50, what would I want to be really doing now? And yeah, I struggle with at the moment running the company that we have, a lot of people are like, you need to keep scaling your business. It's really important to set yourself up financially. But what really drives me is very similar to you. I love just pushing myself and I don't do it for anyone else. Like I ran a marathon, my first marathon a month ago and I didn't do any marathon. I just got up and ran it for myself because I wanted to see what that feels like. Yeah. And it's just for me. And mm-hmm. that's what drives me is training for stuff like that. Yeah. But then you've got people in your ears going, man, that's, what are you doing that for? That's not improving your life. I'm like, I fucking love it at the yeah, moment yeah, yeah. and there'll come a time where i can't do that because my body's I'm, I'm too old but you can always make more money like yeah that's one thing that's guaranteed so for you oh sorry going back to where i was going with that is when you said that that slapped me in the face this morning as like yeah for sport but just for life in general it's like think about today if you were yourself tomorrow would you mm. maximize today is what you're doing right now how you'd want to be spending your time because if it's not, what can we start doing to start changing that? Yeah. And it's just like, um, like, and that's the difference. We were talking about David Goggins earlier. <laughs> yeah. And that's the difference between someone like that. Like people have different priorities in their life. Like, and obviously for me, like, even if sport wasn't, like I just love training so much. And like you said, it's an yeah. addictive thing. Like I'd get, I'd run 32K like on a Tuesday and just the last 8K, I'm just like 8K from home. And I'm like, oh, there's, I don't know how I'm going to get home. Like I'll just like... Because you don't, like, I probably didn't eat or whatever. And, <laughs> yeah. like, but then you get home and you just, like, like, you feel like you want to race. And it's, like, Tuesday at 10.30 in the morning. Yeah. Like, it's the best feeling in the world. It's, like, full on, like, a drug. Like, and I'm addicted Legit, to that. Yeah. Like, it's, like, and you're just sitting at home and no one else knows what you did. But you're just, like, fuck. Like, I don't know how I got back. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, that sort of stuff. Like, I'm addicted. But to me, that's, that's what I sort of loved. And, like, I had challenges to do that led to that like now obviously you got like a business stuff and everything like that but you know like people you might just be an accountant like and just be the best accountant like obviously sport isn't your thing like obviously keep fit and healthy because that's like a good thing to do but like in some you know you might be a doctor or a surgeon or a lawyer or whatever you just got to like you know prioritize what your thing is and just try and be the best at that and I think like everyone has different things like that and if you do like what you're passionate about like you know but someone like david goggins would say like you know what excuse you could get up yeah, at yeah. 3 30 in the morning and go run 20k and you're like well he's a surgeon working at 7 a.m i'm pretty sure that's not going to work out <laughs> yeah. but you not everyone you. has to do that yep. like but his thing is to be an accountant or whatever yep. so like i and like a lot of people are surprised because they think oh you're an athlete you did these world records like you're like that's so cool and you're like tough and everything like that but <laughs> to me like to be an accountant, I can, you know, going to work at 7 a.m., going home at 6 a.m., that's heaps harder to yep. me. Like, what I did was easy. Like, I'll go for a run or whatever, and I can watch a movie after. Like, yep. it's not that hard. Yep. Like, obviously, the hardest bit was, like, those pressure moments. Like, yep. they're the hardest bits. Like, I think, like, if you're, like, you win something, you go, and you've got all these people expecting you to win, and you feel like you've got a lot of pressure. That's the hard bit about being, like, an athlete. But everything else, like, you're doing what you sort of enjoy doing. Like, it's... It's like people have different things. It's like you said before, when you train for something long enough, it shouldn't necessarily be as challenging as maybe someone who's never attempted it before. Like for you, the cool and get a gold. Yeah. You've been training for years for it. You've done it multiple times. So for me to go, fuck, it's hard. You're like, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. different. Like it, in your head, it's a sprint kind of thing. Like yep. it's 46K, but like 
there's different moments of it and it's sprinting. Yep. Like the first three K is sprinting. Like yep. it's like the first three K is like the race is three K. Like that's how fast it is. Like it's a sprint. And then, you know, like I just know there's weak spots in the race. And in those weak spots, I'll be sprinting. Yep. You know, coming out of the water in the swim, I'll sprint that first two K like it's two K run. Yep. So there's like different you break it up into different bits and there's nothing you're scared of, like along the way, kind of thing. And yeah, like I know I always said, like, because I love training, like, I and I'd run and I'm always training by myself. But like, I'd always think if someone can, like, if I, and it's bad because I'd lose, but if I was in that last <laughs> 10K and someone broke me and yep. ran away from me, like, yep. to me, like, that would be something I'd remember forever. Yep. And I like love that stuff. If I can remember that forever and it like, and I'm like, that was like something like that, like, was really like yep. meaningful to me. And that might just be someone that drops me. Like, I don't know. And that's like the opposite of winning. <laughs> like yep. You lost. But still, like, it's moments like that, like character building moments that, like, they're not necessarily bad. Like, it's, um, yeah, I don't know, that sport. Like, oh, you want to experience sort of everything. And I think losing is um, you just can't win all the time. Otherwise, it's boring, yeah. Do you have a moment that stands out for you in your racing career where someone broke you and it still sort of sits there with you? Um. No, not real. The worst year I had was after the record when I did yep. the New York one. I tore my bicep and then I, like, and I should have, shouldn't have done it, but I was a bit <laughs> cocky. Um, so I did the record on the 9th of October and then the cooling out of gold was like three weeks later, like the whatever other thing. And I did the record in New York and I tore my bicep and then I was sponsored <laughs> off Q-Scan. So he, like, scanned my arm, like, four times a week for the next two weeks. And he said, like, how Rice's his name is um, – he said, you shouldn't do it. And I just thought I could do it. I thought, nah, I'm sweet. Like, it'll be right. And I didn't really train. And then I did it and it didn't turn out well. Like, I had to pull out and stuff. And I was super up Because, like, obviously I thought, like, yeah, like I was tough and I could get through it. And I just couldn't. Like, yeah, yeah, it didn't work out. Yeah. That was – and then I did the whole series that summer and I pulled out of, like, two races, like, the first two races of that. Because I just kept on going. Like, you never I didn't, allowed yourself to Nah, recover. like, the series might have started in November – and I, yeah, I just kept going. I just did, like, it wasn't that bad. I could still go and just paddle around training, but yep. I couldn't race with everyone. And I just did, you know, the pull-up record as well. So I'm guessing that would have took a toll Shit, on yeah. doing something completely different. You're probably not, like, because the guys are, like, you know, that's when, like, you got Shannon, Zane Holmes, Kai Hurst, you got, yep. you know, good feels. Those guys are going to smoke you if you're not, yeah. you know, at your best for that. You can't go and try and do pull up record or run a marathon and do clubbies like if you try and do yep. all these different things you're just going to be mediocre at everything kind of thing did that impact you mentally that that season especially where you had to pull out of multiple races and stuff yeah it's just embarrassed i just get embarrassed yeah like especially like my brother that like yeah it's like sulky kind of thing so my brother would like win yep. <laughs> i would have pulled out i mean wa like eating a burger at lunch <laughs> and i'm just like you just feel embarrassed kind yep. of thing and you just like what like and you just think you don't have it as well like because you just don't know um but then i think after like a few seasons after that like obviously i went well um or maybe the next season or whatever but yeah because obviously you know like i've got such a family thing of watching us like my mum would come to every race my yep. auntie would come to every race all my cousins know yep. me and my brother are the guys that do the iron man stuff yep. and everyone's watching so you just feel like you're sort of like yeah it's just embarrassing yeah, how do you bounce back from that then, like mentally? You just, I don't know, you just train and get better and obviously training with, like then we were better, me and my brother, at training together. Like at the end of our sort of careers, we were really good at yep. working together and training together and stuff and I've just got like, it's obviously the best in the world to train with. So if I know yep. I'm going well compared to him and like I was just always like swimming is the hardest thing. Like if you can get, and I think that's why I was so good at the cooling out of gold and stuff because every morning in the pool, like I didn't talk to anyone and like no matter what I led every, so like in swimming, if you're leading, it's kind of harder. Like you're yep. like the guy that jumps in first is usually the quickest in the lane kind of thing. Yep. And if you go second, you're like 10 seconds behind, but you're swimming in their wash a little gotcha. bit. So you're getting dragged along them. Third's even easier. Fourth's even easier. That's perfect. So every, yeah, that's what I mean. Everyone tries to go at the back. Yep. Like, or they're like, you know, once everyone's jumping in, they're like, oh, I'm just give me five minutes. Just pull us in. They're jumping in the back. Whereas I'd like, and that's why like, cause I was just like a little bit, I'll just get like, 
angry. Even training, I'd just get angry. <laughs> so I'd just walk straight to the front. Every single morning, I'd jump in the front, jump yep. in the front. I'd just lead the whole session, lead the whole session. So like you get a good gauge of how you're going yep. when you're at swimming, just leading 6K, you know, four times a week and you're swimming well and you're just, you're just getting tougher and tougher and tougher. Just and tougher. not shying away from the challenge. I think that's yeah epic like we all try to take those cut those corners i'm guilty of it like there's days where you wake up and you're like oh a bit tired so i'll just jump in the back or yeah, whatever yeah, it yeah. is but i think that's where you get to really test or even continue to build your characters where you know what you should be doing so fucking do it like, yeah that's, yeah that's well that makes the um makes the champions pretty much is that sort of especially like i was lucky as well because dean mercer who yep. i raced against so many years in the cool and got to go like he was crazy as well <laughs> and like he was good like i'll yep. give it to him but before like especially for the cool and got to go like i'm pretty sure even sometimes like he would just stay like in his own apartment like away from his family and stuff like on the sunshine yeah. coast training and stuff he was like obsessed with it and i love that like i like he was such a hard trainer but he would take one easy option out because I would lead everything, like the warm-up till the end. So you do about a 3K warm-up, maybe 3K main set and yep. get out. But he would always turn up, you know, 10 minutes late and then just like swim the warm-up in the back. But then when we started that main set, he would just walk to the front, just kick whoever was leading and just go to the lane next to me just so he would race me for the main set every, every yeah, morning. Right. So like four times a week, we would just race each other. And he was like... He didn't have the best technique, but he was so fit yep. and he was a gun. Like, you know, every Wednesday morning we'd do 10, 400 main set and um, it was just like 10, 400s, like medium rest, just all hard. Yep. And that was like every Wednesday and he'd just go on the lane next to me. And I just knew it was like, it was like anxiety of knowing that's coming up every week sort of thing. And then we would just go against each other every single time. So we just got so fit and so like hard going yep. against each other. And then we'd race each other um, every cool and get a gold. And, um, and he was so intense. Like he would, like, he, yeah, he wouldn't really talk to you before it and stuff. And it was like, you, you didn't really like him or he didn't really like you. But then yeah. after the race, like I would have a party at, you know, um, our house yeah. and he would come to the party and have drinks and stuff like at my place. Like, yeah. So he's really, really good after. And that was, you know, he got second or whatever it was. Yeah. So after the race, he was like sweet, but he was just so intense going into it, which was like, that's how I was. So yep. like we were such good rivals and we super like, obviously we do our interviews before it yep. and you could see he loved me and I loved him. Like we respected each other. But when we were racing, it was like, Game you know, on. he would, yeah, he would murder you. Fuck. That's but it. it was good. Yeah. How do you, what inspired you to want to start doing the uh, pull up world records then? Where did that um, come? I don't know. Like I can't really pin, I just knew I was good at it. Yep. And I was always like light, even yep. in, that's why I was good at calling out a God. Cause I was so much like my brother's like, he's got big legs. He's got like a big ass on him. Yep. And I've got like the smallest <laughs> legs ever. And um, he's probably, you know, 10, 12 kilos when we were racing heavier than me. Like yep. I was always the smallest guy, which was hard to like in sprinty races and around the cans and stuff. Yep. I'd still, if I'd still smack you though. <laughs> But um, yeah. So, but in the cooling out of gold, then that's why I was I was, I was just so much lighter. Yep. And then um, obviously I was still strong. I was always like strong in the gym. And then I was just good at pull ups. And I remember just googling it and saw there was a world record. And then that was whether well, the Today Show one in New York. And I thought I could do that. And then I didn't really do much pull ups for it. I just did a, you know a couple hundred every afternoon after training. And then went to New York and did the record. Yeah, that's fucking wild. And obviously Goggins now is trying to. Oh, right. That's what he says. There's no <laughs> way he did it. Yeah. <laughs> Said he did, I don't know, um, 7,800 or something last yep. month, but I didn't see anything. Like yeah. you, You'd think you would post on, on social media or something if like that's that. Because is he going for an official record now or is, it, or is he just – I don't know. He said he did it. Like uh, so many people tagged me in it that, yep. that video he did, and um, he said he did. Yeah, seven thousand eight hundred last month. Saying, but if you do the record, you have to put it like live yeah. on the internet for people to watch yep. and stuff like that. You have to post about it. Like I don't yep. think he posts about it at all. So, and in saying that, you know, his record when I beat it, um, he did four thousand and thirty in twenty four hours or whatever. So seven thousand eight hundred is a big jump. <laughs> Not many people make a big jump like that. Yeah, but I hope he does it. It'd be good. Will you go again? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're sort of planning it up now. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I think I will. Yeah. How does it feel when it gets beaten? Like, obviously, you've had your you've because you've got the one hour, eight hour, twelve hour, 
24 yeah. hour record. No, I don't have the 12 hour. I've got the one hour and the eight hour. I see you don't um, have the tw- not the Did 12. you have it at one point? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the 12 and the 24. But um, yeah, if I do the 24 again, I don't. I might do... Because yeah, I'll, when I did the eight hour, I was going to do the 12 hour. And um, Guinness World Record, I don't know, they were strict about it. They said you can't do both of them. Yep. And um, so, and the eight hour, like I just, that just worked. Where I was, the location, 12 just seemed a little bit more boring. Eight was like, just get it done over eight <laughs> yeah. hours. People will be there watching. So, yeah, I just did the eight hour. But um, the 24 hour is like, obviously the one hour one's cool as well, but the 24 hour, if you just do do it, the 24 hour one be the next one. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. What's it feel like having the record stripped? Or not stripped, but someone come along and beat it? No, it's you? good. Yeah. Like that now, I'm sweet with it. Like when that Jackson beat it, because I knew he, like I heard he really liked me yep. and um, so I caught like when he finished it someone messaged me and said oh can you give him a call and stuff like that so I called him straight away and he was like like the nicest kid in the world yep. yeah like he was so like stunned that I called him and stuff and because if you can do that like you've put in so much work and yep. like effort and like commitment to do it um, so like it's and it's hard like even most people say like the training's like harder than actually doing it but with the 24 hour doing it's harder than the training for sure yep. like doing it the last because it's just like a I don't know I think I could have probably did it better the 24 one I did like I just probably didn't have the best like scientific approach on eating and stuff yep. whereas I like people were giving me pasta and pizza and stuff <laughs> and I was trying to do that while doing yeah. pull-ups and I just ate nothing yep. like this guy saved me he come from like Mount Tambourine or something and he said oh, I saw I was watching it online or something and he wanted to give me like a jar of honey and he gave me this jar of honey <laughs> this is and awesome. that fully saved me yeah and I looked it up they're like 80 buck jars of honey like it was like a full fancy honey this jar, this guy gave me but if I didn't have that because that last eight hours I was like no even with the honey I was screwed like I was so bad yep um like I couldn't speak or anything like a physical like you can't even explain like I physically couldn't speak and then, like, my mum's a nurse and obviously I said I was sponsored off Q-Scan. So, Hal, he's like a brain surgeon. He owned <coughs> own Q-Scan. I could see him and my mum talking over in the corner. And I knew I was in a bad way. Like, I, like I couldn't even walk to the bar. Like, my mates had to, like, hold my shoulders to get me to the bar and stuff. And I was just doing the pull-ups and that would sort of walk me back. And um, I was just real hot. And I just knew I wasn't good. And then I could see them talking. So I knew they were talking about me. So then I started to get real like emotional because I was thinking like my mum's like full worried about me because I could see she was just like like a ghost yep. face kind of thing. And then I could see the ambulance were coming up the stairs and they were waiting off to the side. So I was like, fuck, like that. people must be worried. And then, um, yeah, I ended up getting through it. And I stopped maybe 45 minutes before the 24 hours. But then because the Today Show, I want to do an interview straight away and I couldn't speak so I had to go down and go on a drip for like an hour and then I was sweet after that I was good <laughs> but that eight hours is like you would never ever think your body could get to that like it was intense but it was just like a obviously your body just like gets real sore like everything hurts like just touch that it hurts everything hurts yep. like straightening your arms hurt but you just like a, you just have nothing and you're just depleted of everything. That's how you just feel. You just feel like air, like you're depleted kind of thing. Yep. And I think it's just not having calories because you're just burning so many calories. But yeah, the honey saved me for sure. But like this time, I'd probably like do like, I don't know, even gels. Like I didn't even do yep. gels. Like Are something. You kidding? Nah, like, yeah. Fuck. I don't know. I was too old school going yep. into Sometimes I just like, I don't talk to anyone. I'm just like, no, nah, I'll do this. And yep. I thought I'll have a protein shake every two hours. Like, was I think was my plan and then like people just gave me like pizza and stuff and I was trying to eat that but I well, you don't eat much and then you don't drink much as well yep. because you think if you're drinking you're getting heavier yep. and you're gonna have to go to the toilet more so you just get in a routine of just doing nothing for like six hours and you just don't pull up six hours and you'll have like a little sip of drink or something or you'll have like a bite of pizza and then all of a sudden you're 18 hours in and you're like gone yeah but the first 18 hours was sweet I was yep. like so good I was talking to everyone and that music going but then that last bit, it just like Hell it was like earth. a wall, yeah. So like that's talking to someone like Jackson, like you know, they went through that, yeah. yeah. Like it's a different thing to go through that, and that's why everyone goes for the record, really. Like so many, you can just tell. Like I just tell the talk when I hear them or whatever. Yeah. Like it's easy to do eight or twelve hours. Like that's easy. It's that last bit that like separates like the men from the boys, yeah. as they say. Yeah. Fuck. Let's change it up a bit. Let's sort of dive into the entrepreneurial journey now. So you co-founder of a company, Dr. Hydrate, which brought some stuff in here, which is epic for the cameras. 
that's a that's a little book there. How do you go from um, or what I guess made you want to dive into one co-founding a company, but also in the fitness space? Like, how did that all? Yeah, well, it, it didn't really wasn't really a plan. Um, this is like a legit story. It's, it's a good story, like for a brand. It's something that you think was made up, but it's not. Um, yeah, so I knew Mark Webber from doing like the Mark Webber Challenge and stuff yep. like back in the day um, in Tasmania. And then last, before I did the hour record and the eight hour record last year, because like, and this is like the, the cool side behind like pull-up stuff. Like I was doing just to start with, I was just doing more pull like like I said, I was doing two thousand. If I did two thousand pull ups a day, I'd do that maybe seven days in a row. Some days I'd do forty five thousand pull ups in the month or whatever. Like I think it was I don't know how I worked that out, but I did forty five thousand a month. Jeez. But I started to like put on <coughs> weight. Like yep. I was still f- super fit, but like I was just a bit too like and like even like my mum and stuff would say, "Like, can you looking like big or whatever?" And yep. I could just feel my shirts were just like a little bit like tighter and stuff like that. Um, and then I was just doing the pull-ups and if I did 2000 or whatever, like my hands were just like fully, like Stunned. just like my knuckles would be double the size, like easy double the size. And I just could, like, I, I couldn't straighten my fingers. Like my fingers were just like lock like this. Yep. And like, I was sort of committed to do the records and, um, and obviously no one really knows this, but like I was shit myself. I was like, fuck, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like yep. I can't do the training. Like I couldn't straighten my fingers. I couldn't get them straight. And um, so I'd be icing my, my, my hands at night and stuff. And I was just thinking, fuck, I need to change something here because I'm not going to be able to do it. And like, I didn't tell anyone. And then um, I thought, okay, like I'll just lose weight. Like yep. I'll try and lose weight. So I think I'm too big. Like yep. even, I wasn't doing anything else except pull-ups, but even just the pull-ups was just putting on too much weight kind of thing. So I started like doing all that. Like I was still running then, but I started more running. And I ended up getting to do, I'd do maybe like 10,000 pull-ups in the week and 100K of running. So I was pretty much even even of running and pull ups yep. like running helps heaps um but then to like i thought oh, i won't and i'm really good at not eating like i am good at not Same. eating um so i was thinking oh, okay i'll just i won't eat till i finish training like every day so like it's like my training was yeah monday i do 2000 pull ups tuesday i'd run like 30k and do 500 pull ups wednesday 2000 pull ups thursday 30k 500 friday 2000 pull ups saturday 30k 500 and then sunday like a thousand pull-ups that was like my week and I did that like week after week after week after week I got like super efficient at doing that and um and I wouldn't eat till I finished it like 2 p.m or whatever and I was just mixing this drink I was like but I, I know I need stuff so I was like thought I was like good at like googling stuff so I was like okay I get these vitamins and minerals and then like L-carnitine it's good for like turning fat into energy and it's good for like because I'm just so with pull-ups as well, if you're doing 2,000 pull-ups, like, you have to look at the clock. Yep. If you don't look at the clock, like, time goes quicker. Like, if we were just – like, if I did my 10 pull-ups or whatever, then we were talking to each other, all of a sudden I'd have to go up and do 10 more yep. pull-ups. Whereas if I've got the clock there and I'm watching the seconds go, time goes heaps slower. So That's for every point, yeah. day you got to watch the clock. And if you don't, if you just go on your phone and go on social media, all of a sudden, like – your like your heart harder. rates are so much higher. Like it's, it's so much harder. But watching, so every day for two hours, 50, 2,000 pull-ups, you're just watching <sighs> the ticking of the clock. So I thought, okay, L-carnitine's like this cognitive thinking thing. So I was like, I'll put L-carnitine in it, put L-glutamine, vitamins and minerals, probiotics, stuff like that. In my drink, I put caffeine, but we didn't put caffeine in Dr. Hydrate. So like, you know, like kids can have it or you can have it for yep. your day or whatever. So we took that out. Um, but I was just making this drink and – um Mark Weber called me and I was talking to Mark Weber and he was the, we were just talking about getting sponsors initially for yep. my records yep. and then I was saying how um, I was telling that story about my knuckles and stuff and I was like oh I've made this like super drink like it's like honestly like I think this is the thing that helped me do all the training I've done because it's the fittest I've ever been I'm yep. not really eating anything and then he was and I, was, I told him you know like what I was sort of my theory and what I was putting in it and stuff and he was like okay cool I'll um I'll give you a call back next week about the sponsors and like a location to do the record and stuff. And I was like, sweet. And then like two weeks passed and he didn't call me back. And I was like, he's fully flagged me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he called me back. Like I remember it was a Monday morning and he was like, oh, um, you know, yesterday afternoon I was on the, bal- on the um, balcony with my next door neighbor, Matt, and we were having, you know, a red wine and we were talking about you for three hours. And he was like, let's forget the sponsors. Let's make this drink into a drink. Like, let's, like, work together. Here's a guy, and he gave me this contact of a guy who, he's now a really, really good mate of mine, and he was, like, the supplement guy. And um, 
end up meeting him to have a coffee. We had like eight beers together <laughs> that day. <laughs> and I like wrote down the ingredients of the drink and stuff. And then like a year and a half later, we pretty much had, we were super lucky, I think, with like taste and everything. We sort of nailed it pretty quick. Yep. And then, um, yeah, and then we made Dr. Hydrate. And because um, he sort of thought, you know, like, and Matt, who's his next door neighbor, he's like the brains. And yep. He was just, you know, thought there's nothing like it out there, especially with, you know, like such minimal sugar and it's so good for you. And especially now, like everyone's becoming quite like health conscious on sugar yeah. and stuff. Like, like you know, not everyone's just drinking Gatorades anymore, even like builders and stuff like that. Well, a lot of them do drink that <laughs> Maximus <laughs> crap. But, Dude, yeah. I wasn't going to mention the name, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at Max that drink... Uh, a couple of days ago, it's like four servings in one bottle, and one serving is like twenty something grams. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much shit in it. Yeah, and yeah. there's four servings in one of those bottles. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I think it's just so cheap and it's so yeah. big, and they can just have it's a like liter the of it over of, the, yeah. the day and just like drink that. But even that, like, because my sister's husband's a builder, and yep. I know when she first, like, when I first like met him or whatever. Um, that he'd be talking about having, you know, like those scallops and Chico rolls and stuff like that every day. But like he's even heaps more like health conscious with it. Yep. And he has Dr. Hydrate like every day at the um, building site. So, and it does make you feel better. Yep. Like just most of those drinks are just, you know, sodium and glucose really. So um, literally, yeah. Yeah. So like, whereas ours is everything. Like it's, that's what it is. Like kind of like the all in one. Where, do you, where do you buy it? Um, it's mainly online now. I'll yep. get in like a whole bunch of wholesalers, but the easiest spot's online. Yep. But then, yeah, we're in like Nutrition Warehouse. Heaps of sort of like recovery labs like all around Australia. Like they're really good because obviously like most people like, like pretty much everyone loves it. They love yep. the taste of it. So like if they're in a recovery lab and they're pu- like pushing it, telling yep. people like they genuinely say it's so good, it's really good for you, then like a lot of people sort yep. of take it. So like for me to tell you it's the best, like yep. obviously it's just, it's my drink. Whereas if other people tell you it's the best, then it like means more. Yeah. But um, so those places, but we'll, we'll keep on expanding and getting it out in all the big ones um, soon. So it's coming exciting. into the summer. How does it feel having created this? Like it's pretty insane to have Yeah, the stories, a- the stories, cool. that's what I mean. Like it's like formulating it. Yeah. yeah. Like the story behind it is actually cool. Um, And then obviously it's kind of, because that's how, even with the like cooling out of golds and stuff like that, like I think I'm good at having, okay, I need to do this at this date yep. and I've got this like amount of time to do it. Yep. And if it's a drink or if it's training or whatever, it's like for, like making a program to get there kind of thing. Like I yep. think that's what I'm good at, um, making a thing to get there. And like for that drink, it was like, okay, I need to do 2,000 pull-ups, I need to run. Obviously, I need to be like super lean, but I need to have like all the vitamins and minerals to replenish my body without yeah. the, like the sugar and everything to get to where I want to be. So it's like, yeah, it's like a, I know, like a blueprint of yep. getting there. And I think, yeah, so that's sort of like the drink version of it. Yep. Whereas like the training side of it and even that's when I did the first pull-up record, like no one had broken it down in a minute. So when I went on the Today Show, all these people saw I was doing pull-ups every minute, but no one even thought of that. They just like everyone else just started with went 15 to, yeah. and then next time went 15, the next time went 12 and then all of a sudden at the end they're doing one slight sort of thing. Like no one thought, oh, strategy. if I need to do 4,030 and I've got 12 hours, then the easiest like way of doing that is just splitting it up into minutes and doing it. And then <laughs> so like, but no one thought of it. Like I'm pretty good at like, because I'm good at, like I'm good, I'm a good judge of, um, sport like even yep. like even you know surf life saying whatever like betting and stuff like that I'm, i can see conditions and see that guy and say okay shannon's gonna win this or yep. another one zane home's gonna win this like i'm a good judge of that and um yeah so with that i'm a good judge of if i can do it or not like and even the hour record like breaking it up into minutes was too much so you had to do it in 30 seconds and stuff yep. like that it was the easiest way to do it yep. and then that's why after new york everyone started doing it then everyone thinks it's easy everyone's like oh you just have to do that much a minute simple so then everyone's <laughs> like i remember one guy did it up super fair and he was like and even just saying this i was like there's no way he's gonna do it because this dude respects no one he was like i'm not just gonna beat kane i'm gonna smash him when he said this i was like well, he's not gonna do it because yep. like that's easy to say. Like if you were really gonna do it, you wouldn't say that. Yep. Yeah. And then the dude did like two thousand pulled out or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Karma. But obviously, as you continue to push boundaries physically and also now in the business field, what does success look like for you now? And 
what are like the next goals or challenges you're chasing? Um, well, for this, like obviously I, I love sport and I, I've got so many friends that play sport. So that's why the cool side, because I work with this now, is just, um, and it's crazy how many athletes want to use it. Like yeah. they contact like me and like they say, oh, can I like, can I use it sort of thing? And I'm like, yeah, yeah for sure. Like I love that side of thing. Like, you know, if it's an MMA fighters or pool swimmers or track athletes or whatever, like, like helping them sort of, because like, I don't know, having goals and stuff like that and dreams and everything, like it's such a, like a hard, like it's, I don't know, it's pretty unique. I was even talking to a, a kid um, that we sponsored this or we were the hydration drink for this surfing event um, a couple of weeks ago and it was called, it was Surfing Queen in the State of Origin event and this Matty Jobs, his name is, he um, got a perfect 10 in the final and won it for Queensland. Yep. And just everyone in the, like on Burley Point went crazy. Everyone. He's only like 22 or something like that. I remember saying to him, I was like, mate, like no one experiences that. Like you're super like humble about it and yep. stuff like that, but you got to like, just like enjoy it and know how like unique that is that everyone was cheering you on and you got like a perfect 10 in the final to like win things like that. Like, like that sort of stuff in sports, like priceless kind of thing. Yep. Like obviously winning Olympics, stuff like that is like awesome, but just to like deal with pressure and then having that and just having everyone cheering you on. So just to like help athletes get to like that, stage and like yep. supporting them as well because i know when i was you know having people support me it's like it was such a big thing so you can't do it without it like yep. it's you just can't do it like you have to get a job but um so yeah like having people enjoy the drink especially like every day obviously every day people like i said to you like you know my sister's like a teacher and stuff like that and i thought that's why i wanted to make it the way it was and take out caffeine and stuff because i want school teachers to be able to have two a day or yep. whatever or builders be able to have it and stuff like that yeah but um, so having people enjoy it, helping athletes and stuff for me like that, like the business side of it, sort of like leave to the other guys <laughs> yeah. a little bit, like they yep. can make the decisions, tell me what to do. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm more so the the sports side, and just everyone have it, like everyone using it. Like it'd be so cool to go to America and have, you know, like football players in America use it, and like yep. you know everyone use it. And obviously, it helps hangovers too. <laughs> we can help, yeah, we all need that. Help people get rid of their headache. That's nice. One final question. you got a lot of things going on um, business-wise and also with your physical challenges. How do you balance like that work-life balance and also your mental health while pursuing all of this sort of stuff, dealing with pressure, putting your body under so much stress? Um, well, it's hard. Like definitely the, the start, like you just got to not um, sort of put so much pressure on yourself, I think. Like everyone – like life's tough like I know that like everyone has pro like everyone thinks everything's perfect but it's not like ev- <laughs> like even you know guys that have everything like some of the richest people in the world are the most depressed people like yep. you got to sort of just like realize how lucky you are like and I know that's what I'm good at like I know how lucky I am like I'm super lucky like I'm so lucky that Mark called me like yep. I could have when I was younger I'd be boxing <clears throat> and surfing and stuff like that and I used to regret oh what happens if I kept on boxing and stuff like that but then I wouldn't have like gone down that stage I wouldn't have had Mark call me I wouldn't have Yep. You know, I had you know, five cool and get a goals and had people watch me do that and stuff like that. So everything sort of happens for a reason and um, just sort of enjoy what you're doing. But And then just, yeah, obviously I think sport like and exercise helps everything. Yep. Like I think everyone should exercise. And like you said, you don't have to do it in a group. Like you don't have to be with, you know, 10 other people doing like a group gym session or whatever. Go out and go for some runs by yourself. Yep. Like you feel so much better and just like digesting everything in your head. Um, for me, that's why I think I'm so addicted to it. Because, like, I ran for, I don't know, a couple of years without an iPod or anything. Like, I'd run through that 30K just, yep. just in my own thoughts. And I'd just think about things. I'd think about the plan. I'd think about this. And I'd, that's how I'm going to get here. And that's what's, like, just, like, the future of, like, yep. steps I need to take to achieve, like, what I want to achieve. And it's intense because all of a sudden you're running. You just want to, like, play, 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 <laughs> yeah. vlog someone. Yeah. But it's, like, the way of, like, sort of, like, digesting it. But, yeah, just, like, I don't know. Every yeah everyone has their own sort of like tough things in life you just gotta um yeah just i don't know we're pretty fortunate like you said like and i say to he's one of my mates he's like oh you know um complaining about something I'm like mate you got two arms and two legs people would buddy kill for two arms yeah. and two legs like yeah 100 enjoy like go out and what do you don't be soft kind of thing yeah. yeah just enjoy and make the most so for everyone listening definitely check i'm gonna check out these old uh give feedback but i'm keen to keen to try them but i'll have the links for all the dr hydrate stuff where you can find and follow kane and all the 
insane stuff he's doing even if you just want to watch a dude jumping out of a plane <laughs> it's quite therapeutic it's scary as shit but therapeutic all the links are in the show notes for whatever you're watching and if you enjoyed the episode uh leave a rating a review kane thanks so much for your time mate perfect too easy thanks for having me